I do want to thank you all for coming today to learn about the exciting things happening here in the North Central City Schools. Uh, I do want to recognize our choir, uh, Christine Peer, our teacher who led our 7th and 8th grade select and show choir for entertainment this afternoon. I also want to recognize our Ranger High Tech Academy and our North Ridgeville Academic Center. Teachers Andrew Roadhorse, Jennifer Detmar, our Principal Melissa Durkin, our teacher Kathy Bailey, and Leon Brewster for their help and support in creating our centerpieces today. We do not look at them. And those have been hand created by our students, so we thank them for all of their time. Thank you also for the Chamber of Commerce for hosting this event on behalf of our schools and to Marjorie Snyder for all of the time and effort put into planning today's event. Um, I also want to recognize Eric Buhner in the back here. If you could wave. Mm -hmm. Eric for preparing this delicious lunch today. I know um, Eric is with us for the first year and he has done an outstanding job. Um, and also thanks to Seth Perry and the maintenance crew for quickly transforming what you're sitting in today from a seventh grade dance last night, if you can imagine, uh, to a Chamber of Commerce luncheon. So we do appreciate uh, their help and support. There are some elected officials in the room uh, that deserve some recognition, and they are the reason for all of what you will see today here in this presentation. Um, I will be telling a story through lots of pictures, and I'm excited to show you what's been going on. But without the support of our Board of Education, none of this would be possible. I'd like to introduce Board of Education member Kelly McCarthy. <laughs> Board of Education member Kristen Yetzi. Board of Education Vice President, Marcy Saxon. And Board of Education member, Joanna Tamira, and Board of Education President, Frank Vaca, could not be with us today, but we thank them as well. So last year, uh, prior to coming into the district, so two summers ago, uh, the Board of Education worked collaboratively with the district administration, teachers, district leadership team, to develop our mission and vision for the North Ridgeville City Schools. And this truly drives our daily efforts in all that we do in terms of decision making for children. In addition to the mission and vision, we also established our core values. And the North Ridgeville City Schools is Ranger Strong. Does anybody want to take a guess at what strong might stand for? How about the S? Service. Service. How about the T? How about the R? O. N. G. You, I was never a cheerleader. But we are Rangers Strong, and today I am going to go through with you pictures and tell a story of how our district is truly Rangers Strong. We will begin with service, which is our first characteristic dealing with kindness, compassion, positivity, and friendliness. From September 23rd through the 27th, the North Ridgeville City Schools participated in Start With Hello Week, which is a Sandy Hook Promise program. We are actually hosting their national program here, thanks to Leon Brewster and Greg Plantner, in April, um, where hundreds of students and staff will come to our building to celebrate uh, kindness and respect and inclusion. During this week, teachers discuss with students the skills they need in order to create a culture of inclusion, connectedness, and encourage other students to reach out to those who might be dealing with chronic isolation. In addition to these educational lessons, students were involved in activities that also promoted inclusion throughout the district. During this week, many of our members of the school community, including Board of Education members, city officials, many staff, we're out to greet our students as they entered our buildings. The students in second grade promoted inclusion by decorating Liberty Elementary with multicultural hellos around the building. 
You also see more of our students who were able to greet classmates before school. Students in our high school key club participated in the Alzheimer's Walk at the Cleveland Zoo. In the fall, they rake leaves for many of our residents who were unable to do so. The key club also hosted pancakes for Santa with our community, and they raised over $1,000 for community care through the Love Maggie toy drive. The boys' soccer team, in conjunction with our boys and girls' basketball team, partnered with community care and stuffed the shelves. Together, they were able to collect items at their home games and were able to donate the following. 28 bags of clothing, 105 school supply items, 197 non-perishable food items, and almost $400 in cash. You heard Heather Johnson mention about our partnership with North, Northridge Healthcare. And our student council here at the Academic Center regularly visits the residents at Northridge. In November, they worked with the residents on Thanksgiving crafts, and this past month, they celebrated Valentine's Day through parties. The Northridge was also presented their very own Ranger Strong banner, and they proudly display and support Ranger Strong on their very visible lighted sign on the corner of Mills in 83. As always, we are appreciative of Northridge and all of our community partners. Our Builders Club and Cake Kids collected items to stuff stockings to send overseas to U.S. troops during the holidays, and the clubs were able to collect beef jerky, puzzles, books, playing cards, and were able to stuff 686 stockings for our troops. Our 7th grade Yellow Studio also adopted a family of four for the holidays, providing them what they needed to make the holidays a joyous occasion. Ranger High Tech Academy also collected donations for community care during the holidays, and their sixth grade community outreach project knitted hats to donate to local charities. Our next characteristic of strong is teamwork, and teamwork talks about high levels of community involvement and fostering meaningful relationships. These photos represent our high school Spanish club who came to our academic center to work with our elementary students. These photos were taken at the second or third visit of three visits, and these students were working on learning basic vocabulary in Spanish, such as seasons, weather, days of the week, and colors. In addition, our 10th grade biology class in Ms. Belair's came to the Academic Center to share children's books that they wrote and illustrated about photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Our high school special ed department collaborates with local businesses such as Hyman's, Pet Supplies Plus, and Barnes and & Noble. And the purpose of this program is to give students the opportunities to explore different careers and learn employability skills. The teachers and paraprofessionals act as job coaches, while on their placements and individually teach students the skills they need in order to work in the real world after high school. Our schools also collaborate with many city departments, including our fire department and police department, who often visit our classrooms and speak at assemblies to teach young students how to stay safe. Again, they also are able to meet with many of our city leaders and local politicians, uh, we have Representative Gail Manning, who visited our fourth grade to discuss the branches of government and how laws are made. Mayor Corcoran also visited our fourth grade students to talk about his responsibilities as mayor and discuss to students how they can have an impact on government as early and as young as fourth grade. Our third characteristic of Ranger Strong is respect. And respect is about honoring strength and diversity among the individuals of the school district. Our Sparkle cheerleaders promote inclusion and respect by having students with special needs cheerlead alongside typical peers at our home sporting events. This year, the district formed a unified basketball team. Students with disabilities and typical peers all play on the same team and compete against other districts with similar teams. The unified team is respectful of differences. Our students are given the opportunity to be part of a team while promoting sportsmanship. On November
November 8th, the North Ridgeville High School honored those who served our country by hosting a veterans assembly. Veterans were provided lunch and were recognized through a formal program. Classrooms throughout the district hosted various events honoring our veterans and providing them the opportunity to come to our classrooms and teach our students firsthand. We all appreciate our teachers and that is no different from our students. Our students take great pride in taking part in recognizing teachers in various ways and they do so through teacher appreciation nights at our sporting events. Our high school teams have a tradition to honor teachers by recognizing those who have positively impacted them throughout their academic career. Teachers honored this past year ranged anywhere from a former kindergarten teacher through a current 12th grade teacher and various staff members throughout the district. Ownership is the next characteristic that I'd like to highlight and ownership talks about a commitment to careful and responsible leadership and accountability and integrity in our work. We have been fortunate to grow our team this year of Champions for Life. This is a newer team that has been developed and continues to make an impact at our high school. Champions for Life consists of students in grades 9 through 12 from every sport, band, any event that you can think of throughout the high school where students are learning to become more effective leaders in order to make a positive impact in their school and the overall North Ridgeville community. Liberty Elementary, first and second grade Rangers Strong Young Men and Women Club focus on developing future leaders in both our schools and also throughout the community. This year, the North Ridgeville City School staff has attended over 3,500 professional development sessions. Today alone, we had another day full of enriching, high-quality PD for staff throughout the district based on individual needs. That is all under the leadership of our Director of Curriculum and Instruction, David Pritt. Our professional development opportunities do lead to the constant improvement of student achievement, and we'll look at some of that in a bit. And our mission focuses on the development of the whole child to ensure success. Here is a photo of our teachers taking place in a project-based learning. Many of you hear PBL, um, and this is some professional development to highlight the work done at Ranger High Tech Academy, and these are teachers throughout the district that are learning the same approaches in terms of educating our students. Necessity is a focus on personalized learning in physically and emotionally safe and secure environments. Because of our enrollment growth, the district has added over 30 new certified staff members, including 12 teachers who are in their very first year of teaching. Annually, we hold a new teacher orientation focused on collaboration to develop rapport among staff and to learn how to embody the mission and vision of our school district. We have first year teachers attending professional development, and they do this throughout the school year, again, to find their practice, and truly embody what North Ridgeville means as we talk about Ranger Strong. Safe environments are a necessity. Under the leadership of Director of Operations, Matt Yunker, Assistant Principal here at the Academic Center, Chuck Maurer, and our two school resource officers, Calvin Cross and Frank Trampush, we were able to host a district safety night. This past November, we talked about the importance of training our students in any kind of emergency drill that might occur in our district. It was an active, as you can see on the right, um, an active engagement, and we were able to practice what it would look like in the case of an emergency um, in a way that wasn't threatening, in a way that parents could also understand. This year, we also instituted our School Safe ID Visitor Management System, uh, many of you have had the pleasure of coming into our building and being asked to scan your ID, get a photo. I know this table is cracking up. <laughs> um, and that was all done also in conjunction with our operations department and also under the leadership of Paul Hieronymus, our director of technology. We continue to hold staff and student trainings throughout the district. And again, all of those people are instrumental in, in our number one priority, which is keeping our students and staff safe. 
A newer initiative is Rachel's Closet, and this is a student-led project operated by the Friends of Rachel's Club here at the North Ridgeville Academic Center. This club offers new and gently used clothing and shoes to young adults for students who might be in need. Rachel's Closet also stocks school supplies, hygiene products, and food items. Their mission is about making schools safer, more connected places where bullying and violence are replaced with kindness and respect. This is one of my favorite photos, but during the week of state testing, our third grade teachers at the Academic Center wrote words of encouragement on student lockers. And as educators, we recognize how important it is to provide an atmosphere that is truly focused on positivity. The Early Childhood Learning Community invited kindergarten families to a night of camping-style fun as students celebrated writing, reading, and math. Camp Read A Lot was a great opportunity for parents to partake in educational activities with their kids and to understand what curriculum our students were being taught. Also, a newer initiative that began last year is our emotional support rooms. We have implemented these emotional support rooms throughout the district to support students in self-regulation, social relationships, and behavioral challenges. As a result of these rooms, we have been able to dramatically increase learning time, as well as providing social opportunities for other students who might not have that social interaction on a daily basis with another student. And our final characteristic of STRONG is goals. And this is about the focus on student growth and our achievement, and truly why we all come to work every single day. Ranger High Tech Academy, which is the only STEM-designated public school in Lorain County, gives our students choice and a different opportunity and style of learning. Through project-based learning, students are able to solve problems and work together in critically or critical thinking in order to solve real-world problems. Because of the partnerships with many of you and over 30 businesses and entities throughout the district, our students have been able to participate in 50 community immersions. At Liberty Elementary, counselor Jim Kennedy provides every classroom in the school positive character monthly lessons to show what it takes to be rich or strong. It's not enough to talk about it. We must teach this and teach it very explicitly. Mrs. Browning at ECLC is a great example of a district teacher working closely with students. Here in this picture, developing writing skills through the use of our workshop model. All of our teachers and staff here in North Ridgeville truly work hard to make sure our students succeed. At Liberty, we have implemented the Daily Five. Uh, and that also is across the district. But this is a center-based approach to reading instruction, which truly allows teachers the time to work individually with students in order to meet their needs. At NRAC, students took part in a postcard exchange, also working on writing, and making connections with different schools across the country and across Canada. As recently as this week, this was from Wednesday, a creative way to learn about Native Americans uh, was a fifth grade activity where students researched information about regional tribes and they made a museum here at the Academic Center. The community was invited to share in this effort and I can tell you that at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, three of three studios was absolutely packed. It was parents, it was community, and it was our teachers all working together collaboratively to bring a real world experience to our students. You've heard a little bit about our partnership with Lorraine County Community College uh, when Tracy Green came up earlier, but I'm going to share more facts with you about um, other ways our high school students and students as early as seventh grade can challenge themselves to meet goals. Under the leadership of Dr. Marsha Ballinger, uh, we continue to make higher learning a priority in North Ridgeville City Schools. Our students are able to set high goals and provide supports for, and we provide supports for those goals to be achieved. Our students have the opportunity to take place in AP and Honors courses, as well as College Credit Plus courses beginning, as I said, as early as 7th grade. During the 18-19 school year, here are some more facts for you. 
385 classes were taken by 135 students. 68% of those students took two or more classes. That was all through LCCC. The value of this in tuition and books as we think about it as parents and community members was roughly a savings of $185,000 in college costs. To put in perspective our 2019 graduating class, 70 students earned college credit, that's 25% of that graduating class. 958 college credits were earned. That would be equivalent if we talked about a four-year institution to about a half a million dollars saved to our community. Of our student graduates, we were able, or who, who were able to earn four associate's degrees, one student earned two of those degrees. Uh, so we are very proud about the high goals that our students are setting and achieving as they walk through our individual schools. During the 1819 school year, we also had two students that we want to highlight. Daphne Plantner was named a National Merit Commended Student, and Jonah Fetchner was named a National Merit Scholarship Finalist. These students represented the top scores on their PSAT and NMSQT throughout the country. Ranger Academy is a program at our high school that hosts students, uh, again, as early as middle school, but it's an alternative to traditional classroom experience, these students are provided a small learning environment, individualized learning platforms, and acceptance is determined by application or recommendation. Students that are served in this program are of all ranges. They can be students that are over age and undercredited. They can also be students who are looking for additional math and science courses or in need of additional courses to earn an honors diploma. In addition to those experiences, students also have the opportunity to talk about college and career exploration. All students earn an Ohio Means Jobs Readiness Seal, and they also participate in many field trips and clubs. This slide is particularly exciting to me, and this is just some very quick data that is representative of the growth that, that dis this district has made since we have redistricted and opened the Academic Center. There are four main points that I want you to take a look at. We'll walk through them. Achievement, progress, graduation rate, and gap closing. Again, since the opening of this building, our achievement has grown from a D to a C. Achievement measures how any student on any given day scores on a test, or the overall percentage of students in a particular cohort scores on a test. This could be Ohio State tests, beginning as early as third grade or end of course exams. Progress is something that I want to highlight. This is the same cohort of students, talking about students from year to year and how they're performing and whether or not they have earned at least one year's worth of growth. What's interesting to keep in mind is the state expects a C. A C is average, a C is what is supposed to happen, that is one year's worth of growth. Our progress has gone from a C to a B, meaning we are providing our students more than one year's worth of growth. Progress is further broken down by subgroups as an overall indicator for our gifted population, our students with disabilities, and our lowest 20% of achievement. And that is across the nation, that is not just state. Or, I'm sorry, that's across the state, that is not just the schools. Our overall progress, again, went from a C to a B. Our gifted went from a B to an A. That means those students are earning more than two years' worth of growth in one year. Our students with disabilities went from an F to a C. And our lowest 20% went from a D to a B. What this tells us is that our collaborative atmosphere here in our academic center is really providing our students the opportunity to collaborate with peers and learn from other peers and also have the opportunity to engage with other classmates in order to support their learning. Our graduation rate went from a B to an A and graduation rate looks at the amount of students in four years or five years who are successful in graduation and the gap closing from an F to a B. 
Gap closing considers our subgroups of students, meaning any student um, who might fall into any subgroup out there, whether they are a student with a disability, a gifted student, um, a student who might be African American, Hispanic, etc. And there are multiple subgroups that the state does measure, and we were able to close that achievement gap in a very short amount of time. So in order to sustain all these opportunities and what we do for students and staff on a daily basis, it is critical to plan for our preferred future. We must also remain fiscally responsible to our community, and we must continue to meet the needs and expectations of our students, staff, and parents. You heard about issue 17 earlier, and I'm going to take a moment to talk about issue 13, which is a ballot issue on November, or I'm sorry, on March 17 that supports our schools. <coughs> issue 13 is not a new tax for our current homeowners. It is a substitute tax levy on the March 17th ballot that combines what is already in place in four emergency operating levies. This issue accounts for 40% of our local operating revenue. Issue 13 is for a fixed 10-year term. This is unlike November, where we had a continuing pass. We heard from the community loud and clear that they wanted the opportunity to come back and evaluate our school district and let us know that we were providing for them all of those great things that you saw before. And so we changed the term to a 10-year to allow the community to come back and provide us that input. You've seen a slide similar to this, either last year or in other presentations you might have been part of, but this is our student enrollment growth. The blue lines represent what the state told us we might have in terms of student enrollment, and the red lines represent our actual enrollment. In 2012, we passed our last operating issue with the promise to the community to not come back for 10 years, and we maintain that promise. We are not asking for new money with issue 13. Despite all of the student growth, our revenue has not kept pace. Our enrollment has increased by over 700 students in the past decade, and more than half of them have come in the last two years. That growth rate is not expected to change and will continue for the foreseeable future. The reality is that we are making do with less. Despite new funds, we have had to increase staff to accommodate 700 new students. We have had to expand transportation services. We have had to outfit classroom space never designed to be classroom. We have had to purchase additional classroom supplies and materials and think about other operating costs like utilities. Again, issue 13 in spite of this is not additional money. So what is the advantage of a substitute levy over what we currently have in place? A substitute levy will allow us to capture growth in new operating dollars levied on new assessed properties. It will maintain current programming of high quality staff and continuing to maintain our facilities and grounds. It also allows us to be fiscally responsible to the community. Right now we are returning to you four times in four years to renew levies. This would provide us one, year, one time every 10 years. I don't intend for you to read this. This is what the ballot language will look like on March 17th. $10.6 million in 11.72 mills. That looks terrifying if you're not aware of what this levy is. Those are big numbers, but let's take a look at how that's broken down. On the left, you see a pie chart that is representative of what is currently in place. Levy A, levy A, <coughs> is a $2.7 million levy that expires in 2020. Levy B is a $1.9 million levy, again these are fixed dollar amounts, that expires in 2020. Levy C is a $4.3 million levy that expires in 2022. And levy 4, or levy D, is a $1.7 million levy that expires in 2023. 
If you add up the millage and if you add up the dollar amounts, you will see that it equals what we are asking for. I'm sorry, this is really hard. <laughs> in our substitute levy, which is $10.6 million for 11.72 mills. What is interesting to note is that you see two pieces of the pie that are somewhat removed. Those are two levies that expired in 2020, December 31st of 2020. If those are not renewed by the end of 2020, they will fall out of that pie chart and become a new ask down the road. What's important about that for community members is that currently, if renewed through a substitute levy, they will maintain their homestead and rollback exemption. If they become a new ask, they will no longer qualify putting back on the tax base that 12.5% that is currently subsidized by the state of Ohio. In totality, those two levies combined equal $4.6 million. The 12.5% on that is about $567,000. Another way to look at a substitute levy, if you look at the top portion of this graph, we have our existing residents. As new homes are built, we still generate $10.6 million. We can add as many new homes as we want. We will still generate $10.6 million. With the substitute levy, we stand to gain $4,102 for each million dollars of newly assessed construction in the district. That money would be on top of the original collection of $10.6 million. I'm going to give you a fact, and it's not totally accurate, but we did some, our treasurer, Patrick East, did some quick math for us. Last year, we had $25 million worth of assessed construction in this city. That's about $75 million of appraised value. If that continued for the next 10 years or over the course of the substitute levy, not taking into account triennial updates or any new property valuation, the district would stand to gain nearly 13 million additional dollars. And that is why issue 13 and combining these four emergency levies into one substitute is critical for the future of North Ridgeville City Schools. We do have some frequently asked questions that come up as we talk through some of this information, but will there be a bond issue? I believe last year we talked about the critical need for building and the critical need to accommodate those students that continue to walk through our doors. The answer is yes, we, we will need to consider that, but until we can stabilize our operating funds, we cannot consider building at this time. If issue 13 were to fail in March, what is next? We do have another opportunity in November uh, to at least renew the issues if need be. If issue 13 were to fail, will cuts, will cuts be made? The simple answer is yes. Any subsequent failures will result in the loss of revenue again in the amount of $4.6 million. That would begin to be felt here in the district in January of 2021. It is unlikely that we would make cuts at that time. However, for the beginning of the 21-22 school year, we would see a significant impact in the amount of at least a $4.6 million cut to our district. In conclusion, I hope you understand the importance of Issue 13 in our city and for our school district. I hope that you also can continue to work on that uh, homegrown effort of Ranger Strong and what it means to the community of North Ridgeville and how we can continue that grassroots effort as we think about our community partners and our businesses throughout. There are a few final thank yous that I have to uh, recognize. Um, our cabinet has been recognized, at least part of you. Um, I know I'm missing Assistant Superintendent Keith Ahern, who was instrumental in putting lots of this information together. Um, Patrick East, our treasurer. David Pritt, director of operations. You guys can wave so people know who you are. <laughs> um, Matt Younger, director of operations. Director of pupil services, direct Julie Delberti. And director of technology, Paul Hieronymus. 
I also need to thank Sam Bean in the back, who's recording, um, again, for taking all these photos and putting together uh, this montage for you. I also need to thank Anaya Abed. There. And I is my assistant who worked diligently with Marjorie Snyder to plan and coordinate this event, our choir, our showpieces, um, and everything that you see today. I also need to thank all of our district staff for the work that they put in. You saw many, many pictures today of the great work that our staff does to show how much they care about our students and the growth of our community, and to our parents and community for their constant support. Um, whether or not they have children in our district, we appreciate them coming to our events, showing up, and showing support of our schools and the growth of our city. And finally, thank you to my husband, Michael Casario, who's up front here. Uh, this job is pretty demanding, especially when you're campaigning for a year and a half straight. And without his support um, and ability to care for two children and make sure that all of us are fed, I'm not sure I'd be standing here. So thank you. Again, I thank you all for being here today. I thank the Chamber of Commerce, and I do appreciate uh, you taking the time to learn more about the great things we're doing in Northridge Hill City Schools. Have an awesome weekend.